Mr. Dixon, any injuries ever in the ring while you're training? In other words, anyone ever get hurt? Knocked out, yeah. Knocked out, yeah. Knocked out. <laughs> Eric, Eric, we brought Eric down to the Bronx about three years ago, three, four years ago, two, two or three years ago. And um, we had a sparring session set up for him. And the guy got in first round. He came at Eric real hard. And I told Eric, Eric, listen, you listen to your trainer to the one you win if you got a good corner trainer. I told him to throw an overhand right as soon as he come out. He came out, Eric threw an overhand right, put the guy to sleep for one whole minute. <laughs> it was so intense that I got nervous. You know, and I know CPR and everything, I was getting ready to tell him to call 911 because the guy, you know, when you get knocked out, you shake. But he wasn't asleep. even shaking, he was just laying there. <laughs> so he was very nervous at the time. You don't really want to see people get hurt, but you want to win. Get in the ring to win, but it's a killer instinct sport, so somebody might get hurt, but if you're in shape, you won't get hurt. And that's got to tell you one downside to the sport is that your head is not made to be getting hit, you know? You must know it. I'm, I'm against women boxers, but my daughter wanted to do it, and she had the right to do it, and she's good too. She's very good. But if, over the years of getting hit, your brain swells. That's why you see a lot of boxers that had long careers. They call them punch drunk now. Or they bobble or slur when they speak. You know, bobbling like, a, you know, slurring. And um, that's from a long term of boxing. So if you're thinking about doing it, do it for condition. Do it for a quick sport. Get in and get out. But if you're real good and you get paid a lot of money, then it's a whole different thing. You know, I just want to tell you the downside to it. Do you ever fight his daughter? Huh? Do you ever fight his daughter? No, I was training his daughter this weekend, though. She yeah. comes to me now for some training, too. Huh? No, we don't fight. Oh, okay. Girl, <laughs> girl do, your girls do spar boys. Yep. Oh, that's what I want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but, but it's different. Gotta go easy. Yeah. Oh, the boys gotta go easy? Oh, yeah. Mr. Dixon, um, I think one thing that every kid in here could benefit from is hearing a little bit, and I know you got to get going about nutrition because, um, you know, we hear about childhood obesity, this and that. What do you advocate for your boxers or people who aren't even training in the gym with you? Well, well cutting weight, and I'm going to let Eric tell you a little bit about cutting weight because when I, when I fought, I ran for 10 years, I ran three miles every day, six days a week. I fought at 175 pounds. I never went over 178 pounds. So conditioning, you know, vegetables, fresh vegetables, you know, proper foods, not fast foods. Fast food is the, is the big part of obesity to this day right now. So you eat the proper food, that's food from the earth, you know, green vegetables, fruit, vegetables. You know the, you know the routine. And um, don't overeat. You know when you're overeating. And I always was told, eat when you're hungry, not when you think you're hungry. But I'll let Eric break down the uh, cutting weight part. Yeah, see, with boxing, it's a little different that coming from a wrestler, you know, I as a wrestler, I wrestled here, I wrestled in college, and I do the MMA now. I don't do the boxing. I do the boxing to help with the MMA, the mixed martial arts. Like you guys see on TV, the UFC, that's what I do. I don't box professionally, but I do it to help that. But the cutting weight for that is a lot different. Uh, like he was saying with boxers, sometimes you weigh in the same day that you're going to fight. So for that, you don't want to lose a lot of weight for that. When I fight right now, I weigh 165 pounds, and I'm going down to 145 in February to fight at 145 pounds. So I'm going to have to cut a lot of calories out of my diet, drink a lot of water, but I'm also working out three, four times a day. So I'm burning a crap load of calories. <laughs> so I can eat a little more than a normal person could that's trying to lose weight just because I'm working out so much. So if you, with the exercise, outweigh what you're taking in, you're obviously going to lose weight pretty easy. So it's not going to be too difficult. And uh, let me just say this, the business part of my, my business is training now MMA fighters mm -hmm. because uh, about 50% of MMA fighters need to know how to box. It's three, it's jiu-jitsu, wrestling, and boxing. A lot of MMA guys come in with the jiu-jitsu and wrestling behind their belt, but they don't have the boxing, so that's where my business come in. They hire me to teach them how to box. So they see me in a lot of, um, uh, at a lot of fights, they see my fighters fight real well, so they get come up, they approach me, I give them my card, and that's when I get the phone call. Yeah, one question? Yeah, um, so you talk about cutting down weight uh -huh. for 
fight, but then you said that if you weigh in the day before you put on like 16 pounds, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Well, basically what happens is you stay at your, close to your natural weight as possible until about the week before the fight, okay? And that last week, it's literally no contact, so you're not doing any sparring, you're not doing any wrestling, nothing. It's just all cutting weight. So basically it's all conditioning. So you're running, you're jumping rope, you're doing the mitt work, you know, no contact stuff where you're getting hit. And that last week, it's called sucking out, where you're losing all your water weight. You don't want to try and lose your muscle, you want to try and just drain yourself of all your water weight. That way, when you weigh in, you drink a gallon of water, and you put back on six to eight pounds, boom, right there, because your body just absorbs it all. Just to add to that a little bit, that's where, that's where the discipline comes in at. Yes. You stop. Your last meal is between five and seven. No you later don't eat eight. after that. Nice. I mean, nothing but a sip of water. And that's after a hard <clears throat> workout, small meals, small proportions, at dinner time, even smaller, and at seven o'clock or five o'clock, you stop eating, then whatever time you stop eating, that's the time you start back eating. So if you stop at 5, you can eat 5 in the morning. If you stop at 7, you can have your breakfast 7 in the morning. But 2 to 1, you got to run after you eat. Putting the weight back on, it's like 65% of it is water. <laughs> so soon you weigh in at 145, and you go and you turn, you got you go down a, a quart of juice. That's 5 pounds right there. Then you go get some blueberry pancakes. With syrup and everything, that's another seven pounds. Then later on that day, you might have a lunch, that's another three pounds. So you come back in weighing 15 pounds heavier. By the way, what you were saying about the pancakes, that's actually the easiest food to gain weight, just to let you guys yes. know. Yes. Yes. Because yes. when you eat it, and then you drink something, it absorbs everything. Yes. So you put weight back on the quickest when you eat pancakes. And that's what I ate too. I guess that weighed in with the pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well listen, let's have a nice round of applause for Mr. Lenny Dixon. Eric Fama and Raymond Durrett. Great job, guys.